Hi, welcome to another video for Algebra 2. In this video, we're going to examine the tangent functions. So this is the third of the trigonometric videos. So the tangent function is defined by tangent x equals cosine x over, I'm sorry, sine x over cosine x, or our y over our x term. So this is what the uh, tangent function would look like once it's all said and done. So let's take a look at how we end up with this product. So once again, this is the, the parent function, okay, sine x over cosine x. This is very important to keep in mind as we examine how we end up with this graph. So we're going to lay this off to the side. And keep in mind that anytime you have a zero in the denominator position, it is undefined. So you end up with an asymptote. And that is our dotted red line that you see in our graph. So let's put this off to the side. And we want to look at the, uh, simultaneously at the unit circle to see how we, uh, we end up with what we end up with on a graph. So here we have our graph on the left. All right, so let's start off on our first point. At zero theta, at zero degrees, our coordinate points are one, zero. So our x is 1 and our y is 0, and you can see that on our tangent equation. 0, 1 is essentially just 0, so we're going to graph that point. At 0 theta, it's, we're at 0. At 90 degrees, at 90 degrees we are at 0, 1, so that's 1, 0, 1 over 0. So again, we have a 0 in the denom denominator position, so we are undefined. So now we have an asymptote at 90 degrees. Now you might be wondering, what about the points from 0 theta to 90 theta. Well, we'll take care of those points in just a second. Let's just keep looking at our, our, main, our main points at every quarter of the unit circle. So next is at 180 degrees. That's negative 1 over 1. We end up with 0 over negative 1. Okay, so that's 0. So we end up with another point. And these points signify where our tangent function will cross the x-axis. So you can take a guess at 270, we're going to end up with 0, negative 1. So our x term of negative 1 goes on top, and our y term of 0, I'm sorry, our x term at the bottom, 0, and our y term at the top, negative 1. So this is undefined, so we end up with a, another asymptote. And then at 360, 1 over 0, okay, essentially 0. So there we go. So we have two very important things. We have our asymptotes, and we have where our graph will meet or uh, crosses the x-axis. The next thing that we want to draw is what the actual lines will look like. So I mentioned before uh, we would talk about what happens to the points from 0 theta to 90 theta. Well if you consider the fact that as we approach 90 degrees, that, that's also signifying in radians pi over 2, we actually never come in contact with 90 degrees or pi over 2. The line comes very, very close, but it never actually touches the asymptote because if it ever come in contact with the asymptote, well, mathematically it would be impossible because it's an undefined term. So that line will just come closer and closer, infinitely closer to that asymptote, but it never actually goes into contact. Now, if I were to draw the full, um, what that line looks like in its entirety, you could see that in the next one. So our function is trapped between our asymptotes. It never actually comes in contact, but it's just stuck in between. And then the same thing would happen with our 360 point. So that essentially is what our tangent function would look like. Let's take a look at a cotangent. What would that look like? Well, our sine x over cosine x would also be flipped, okay? Because cotangent is 1 over tangent x. So uh, essentially, that's just flipping our cosine and sine. So I'm going to kind of gray out our tangent function so you can kind of see it a little bit, okay? Uh, and the reason why I grayed it out is so that you can see how our cotangent graph looks superimposed um, on our tangent. So with our cotangent, it's not that, it's not that difficult to draw because um, our, if you look at where my tangent line crosses the x-axis, that point now becomes my new asymptotes. So those are my new asymptotes. Now if you look at my asymptotes from tangent, those will become now my new points of where my new graph will cross the x-axis. So you see how it kind of reverses? And now of course our tangent line, or our cotangent line, is the mirror image or the reflected image or the reflected function of our tangent. So it's basically just mirrored backwards and that's our cotangent line. 
Okay, well that completes our uh, graphing of our tangent functions. I hope this was helpful. Good luck in your studying.